Hello and welcome to this episode of Pause with Nandini on NRI Affairs. And today I have a very interesting guest who has come fresh off the Bharat Joro Yatra. And uh, I have a lot to talk to him about. And he is an entrepreneur, a social commentator. And as I have discovered lately, he's also an author of a book called The Scattered Rainbow. So we will talk to him about a lot of different things. But uh, first, let me just welcome him. Darshan Munkar is here with us today. And we will pick his brains on the Yatra, on what um, what sort of he uh, makes of all of this and the unprecedented sort of uh, support that the Yatra seems to have got from people from all walks of life. Thank you, Nandini. So, I mean, uh, I would like you to lead because I don't know where exactly you want me to start from. Absolutely. No, let's just begin first with a little bit of background. Um, what is this Yatra? Not everybody may be uh, completely aware of the details because as we are in Australia and for some reason, um, the mainstream media hasn't focused as much on this even though I do think it's quite historic what is happening right now. So this is a yatra which started from Kanyakumari. This is led by uh, Rahul Gandhi. And he has a bunch of other people who have joined in. And that bunch of other people has grown into thousands and lakhs of people who have come in support. Um, I think we are on day 75 or thereabouts at the moment. Uh, they've covered 31 districts six states, and uh, the distance, I think they're somewhere near the halfway mark. And the goal is to end this yatra, which is a journey on foot uh, in Kashmir. Um, so that's well, the background. Um, if there's any other detail you'd like to give in, please do at this point. I think, I think they're going to do around 3,500 kilometers in total, and they're going to end with a flag hoisting in Srinagar. That's that's the plan. And you know, uh, it's it's impossible, even if you're very apolitical, to not be moved by something like this. Well, actually, you know, uh, the apolitical thing is something which happened in the discussion with me and uh, Rahul Gandhi. So he asked me, uh, "Who do I support? Which party do I support?" And I said, "I don't support any. I'm not affiliated to any party." So basically he asked me if I was a Congressy, and I said, no, I'm not a Congressy. I don't support any political parties. And he said, did you say you're apolitical? I said, no, I'm not apolitical. He said, yeah, because you cannot be apolitical. The point of being apolitical is that you are not bothered with the politics and politics does not bother you. That does not happen. Politics comes to your home anyways, whether you like it or not. So being apolitical is a nice uh, cover to, you know, not speak out your mind out in the open. But secretly, you know what you want. This is true. And uh, one of the most interesting things about this is that, of course, you walked uh, for a certain amount of time with him. And which is why I wanted your impressions of your conversation with him, as well as your impressions of the other people, the common people you were walking with. But what was most striking from a distance, what we saw of the walk, was that it was all political persuasions. It was all kinds of people across social strata. Um, you couldn't look at the people walking with him and define them as anything other than Indian. True. I mean, when the, when the Yatra started in Kanyakumari, I'm, I've been following the Yatra right since then, because, you know, it's like, what is he going to really do? The, the thing is, Rahul Gandhi has been always uh, been accused of not doing anything. You know, so when he tweets, people say, tweet, kyu kar rahe? Why, why don't you get down on the ground? So when he actually got on the ground, it was like fun, you know, let's let's see what he's up to. And then, you know, the way the media has portrayed is that he's a goof up guy. So he goofs up all the time. So I started watching the Bharat Jodo Yatra with, you know, getting some content for the goof ups. And by the time Kerala finished, they did not make a single goof up. And I was really interested. As in, okay, they are, they are, they are trying to do something good. The, the concept that they started with, you know, of, of Nafrat Chodo, Bharat Jodo was very nice. It was, it was not about hi, hi Modi or, you know, down with BJP. It was not a negative campaign. It was a very positive campaign. It's like, 
who doesn't want to forget about nafrat and who doesn't want to come together so that's what kept me on with you know following up picking up i mean i really got into till till the daily schedules of them listening to all the speeches seeing what was going on who were the people meeting how easy was it to meet them and by now it's become a huge crowd but in kerala it wasn't so big so there are a lot of people that decide to go what made you decide let me go oh well, first of all they were coming in maharashtra so that was one thing i probably i'm not sure i'm i'm quite lazy so i don't know if i would have gone to some other state i still had a 12 hour drive to go to where the yatra was uh, but one thing is that i mean a number of things one is that uh, it's it's not about a political party so the slogans which are being shouted off is is not jai congress or something like that they are talking about uh, bharat jodo they are talking about nafrat chodo they are so, uh, talking about getting people together and they are addressing issues of unemployment they are addressing issues of fascism yes but primarily the entire aura is about getting people together now that is what even i believe in that since the last 10 years people have been driven apart and it's not just the fascist versus the anti fascist it's even the regular people are fighting amongst themselves so uh, that was that was an attraction point and the biggest thing was now this is going to be an historical moment in in india this i don't think anybody has walked like this in india since probably gandhi went on a tour of india and even then he went by train so you have got a choice at this point of time you know then when something historic is going to happen are you going to be a part of it or are you going to sit at home and watch on watch it on tv and then pass comments on social media hmm. so i decided to be a part of it that was a better thing to do tell me this when you went there um and you had a chance to interact with many different people what were some of the reasons that you were finding of people joining i mean i've been listening to freedom fighters old people who are joining who are saying i'm doing this for my grandchildren i mean it's so moving you know that lady i don't know if you've seen a video yeah, yeah, seen that, yeah. she's saying i you know i this is like the last thing that i am going to do for my country and it was so moving uh, but i see like out of the people who are walking with him the whole journey the average age seems to be 30 so there are a lot of young people as well who are walking what were some of your impressions of other people well, actually there were a lot of young people so i i'm not sure if it was the, the average age is 6 uh, 30 i think it's lower than that because a lot of people have not come on the camera the yatra stretches right from maybe a kilometer ahead of rahul gandhi till like a kilometer behind rahul gandhi so the people walking ahead are all young and they don't come into the picture okay. so it's definitely less than 30 now different people are joining it for different reasons like you you spoke about the lady right which about the grandchildren but what i found as one striking factor is everybody thinks this is the last one. this is the last option or hope left so that that has pulled a lot of people in so they think ab nahi to kab nahi you know so, something Can i ask that, you sir. something you know a lot of times the the impression and i might be wrong but the impression is that it's only the small group of liberal westernized people who oppose the mainstream politics of the day and most of india is with the current ideology but then if you are saying that there are lots of people joining who are saying this is the last hope what does it mean have they no, not been given a voice have they never spoken out before no see basically basically where where do people get voices from either the media sticks a mic in the front of the face so it's a choice of the media whom to give the voice to or there is social media so the voice the the dissenting voices on social media are, are of the people that you are talking about but i'm thinking there's around a 38 40% uh, shift on the bjp side which makes a 60% shift on the other side too correct the only problem is it is fragmented it is not with the same party but they are of the same view they just go to different temples you know as the same <laughs> yes you know this um, i read this article by asim ali in the telegraph online where to your point he said the ideological center of the congress's national campaign for 2024 should be rooted in the 60% of the national electorate that did not vote for the bjp 
and the Bharat Joro Yatra in the words of the Congress leader Jairam Ramesh is meant to build a platform against the BJP on three planks, economic disparity, social polarization, and political centralization. Right. Now, these are things that, you know, when you read it in a news article, it almost seems academic in some ways. But then the, the sort of coming together of people seems more emotional. There's an emotive connect that has happened which a lot of people have been saying for a long time that the opposition has not found a unifying emotive voice. You cannot fight this on facts because people have supported on emotion. So yes. you can only combat an emotion, an overwhelming sense of nationalism or pride in being Hindu or whatever it is that they have been able to evoke. You can only counter that with an equally strong emotion. Yes. Do you think then that emotion, emotional content seemed very high in people? It, it, is, it is, it is. It is very high and I think they're building upon it. I mean, the entire concept of the Yatra is on Nafarat Chodo, you know, which is emotional thing. It is not a tangible uh, thing that you can measure. Oh, oh, yes. 30% Nafarat has been re reduced. It's not something that will happen in this manner. So... It is, it is very emotional. People, I think people are also fed up of hate. You know, people are fed up of getting angry every day. People are fed up of outraging over everything. If you even notice the social media, the trend of trolling has gone down. Reasonably. They are not there. People are not <laughs> Yeah, so so people are like, bus ho gaya hai. So mm -hmm. Rahul Gandhi saying, bus ho gaya, to come, come together. So I think it is working really well. It's really working well. How do you then see, like, obviously, in, you know, in social media, everybody's quite combative, right? And then you have the Amadmi Party, for instance, uh, there are several very vocal supporters of the Amadmi Party. And, you know, to be fair, where, uh, where work is concerned, you can obviously look at things in a dispassionate, non-political way. But uh, there's been a lot of mudslinging on this uh, yatra saying, show us the work. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you're walking, you're walking, you're, you're talking about Bharat Joro, but um, where is the work? And when you speak to some, maybe you have access or you have spoken to people, do you see this as the first step then foundationally of doing that work? It, it, is, it, is, actually, it is actually a foundational uh, uh, thing which is happening right now with the Yatra because, you know, what, what we are discussing in the Yatra is that the four, four pillars of democracy they have already crumpled. One yeah. is sold off. The other three has three have gone. The judiciary is compromised. So they don't really they don't really work that well. So what is left is the foundation on which these pillars are built. And you have to restructure the foundation, rebuild the pillars. So what is happening right now is restructuring the foundation. And it's really happening on ground. You can see it in the Yatra when you're work, walking there. Because we weren't walking in Mumbai and Pune. The crowd who was there was not paid. I was not paid despite popular... Uh, opinion. <laughs> Not even in biryani. <laughs> no, no, no biryani. I, I, I had dal rice. But which, that's good yeah. enough. <laughs> yeah, that's good enough. Yeah, that's good because then I could walk. Otherwise, I would have slept. So. Um, you know, you're saying that you know you saw a lot of people coming, and the whole idea is foundationally to build the Congress. Do you think the Congress itself has been a bit astounded by the response? I think so. Yes. Yes. I, I, I'm pretty sure they did not expect this kind of response. Pretty sure about it. But one thing that worked in their, uh, in, in their favor, and I don't know who has actually masterminded this in Congress, because I, I seriously don't, don't think that it's, it's the work of the same old guard. Somebody has masterminded this in Congress and they have connected with the civic society more than they have connected with anybody else. So they've been literally calling up everybody from the civic society, asking them to come and join. Can you, can you come, you know? So there's a lot of people who are walking in the Yatra, not a part of Congress, and who are not there to meet Rahul Gandhi. I met so many people who have been walking right since, since Telangana. There was a group of around 20 people walking from Telangana right into Maharashtra. They were going to walk across Maharashtra and then go home. Rather, they were going to Indore and then taking a train back. So I asked them, so did you get a chance to meet Rahul Gandhi? And they said, no, that was not our point anyway. We're just walking. It is so interesting. It sort of completely flips the way we have seen the, 
you know, the political party in power behave in terms mm -hmm. of access, in terms of inclusion, in terms of transparency, it just seems something so unfamiliar that I think for, for many of us, it's almost like it could be done this way. There could be this kind of access. <laughs> to, to, be, to be very honest, what Rahul Gandhi is doing right now is also uh, new for Congress. Congress has not been like this all the time. I mean, if, if they were like this, they wouldn't have lost 2014 Absolutely. because of their arrogance. Absolutely. So they, they, I, you cannot say that Congress has been uh, the epitome of honesty or, you know. The, what the we were talking uh, about. Yeah. And, and people remember. Of, it's also people do remember. You know, they oh, do yes, remember the emergency. They do remember many things that, um, you know, you could equally fault the Congress for maybe. Yeah, I mean, don't even go till don't even go till the emergency. Don't even go till 1984. I'm talking about as recent as 20, 2012, 2013, where where an artist, I think his name was Asim Trivedi or something like that. He was he was jailed just for making a cartoon. That was not BJP. That was Congress. You know, or when the when the uh, when the corruption India against corruption thing started. Okay, fair enough. We'll we'll not get into who sponsored it and who funded it. But talking about anti-corruption is not a bad thing. So when 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 they started with the uh, India against uh, corruption thing, the Congress royally ignored it for a long time. And then when they realized that it was building up, they said, okay, now come, let's talk. So the Congress has not been really the the best example of of a government. They have been better than what it is right now, no doubt about that. This is where the cynics, people who have seen many different cycles of political party come and go. This is where I feel the cynics um, sort of are still holding back, saying that, you know, we have not, we have not seen the work, right? We have not seen where this well, goes. You know, is this a PR cynical. exercise? I think I think being cynic, cynical is a passion. It's a sort of a hobby. You know, you you can be cynical about everything. It's it's like being a movie critic and giving bad ratings to a movie. You can give a bad rating to any movie. It's a power really trip, want. isn't it? Yeah, maybe it's a power trip, an ego trip. Call it what you may. But I mean, there is there is something called as an ev evolution, right? So every political party evolves for mm -hmm. the good, for the bad, whatever. I mean, Vajpayee's BJP is not the same as Modi's BJP. Arvind Kejriwal plus Yogendra Yadav plus Prashant Bhushan is not the same up as, as the up of Kejriwal. In the same way, Indira Gandhi's Congress is the, not the same as Rajiv Gandhi's Congress, is not the same as what, what Rahul is doing right now, what, will not be the same as what happens after this Yatra ends. So they are going to keep on changing. Now, if you are going to say all the time that, okay, now we don't trust you because in 1976 you did something like this, then it doesn't make any sense to me. That's not that's not being cynical. That's just being, you know, I don't know. You just don't want to accept anything. You know, that's I like, that's a sitting as a pushni over. I think that's a very fair point because uh, you want change, but you will not allow for change. Not change. Yeah. And then how are things going to move? Just when I was looking at their website, you know, this Meri Yatra, Meri Pehchan, there's a, on their website, there's a way that you can sort of upload your picture to be yeah. all of these very new age sort of uh, tools and techniques to sort of keep people, gather people, then the live feeds, the news and updates, the names and pictures of the Yatris who are doing the whole thing, you know, it seems, it seems, honestly, it seems far more organized and managed then you would probably give credit to any political party to pull off. Uh, you know, a, a few months ago, uh, Congress was the third on social media promotions. BJP was the first by a long margin. Aam Admi Party was actually second. And Congress was the third. Now, after the Bharat Jodha Yatra, Congress is now on the second page. That, is, that has disturbed the Aam Admi Party quite a bit because they're suddenly losing the only ground that they held to, you know, the social media. That has been always mm -hmm. Aam Admi Party's trump card. Fantastic social media campaign. I'll, I'll not deny that. Now, I personally think that the Bharat Jodo Yatra is not being managed, organized by the Congress. It is being managed for the Congress. 
there has to be an external agency there has to be professional okay. help and there's so no there problem revelations on nri affairs no, no, no. This, is, this is just a, this is just a guess i'm not giving you any internal things this is just my guess because and and there is no harm in this there's no harm in this when you're running a business when you're running an organization you have consultants somebody else makes your websites you don't sit and make your website yourself you get technical experts for that and that's what this is doing what what's wrong with that absolutely nothing wrong so getting consultants getting pr agencies getting technical tech know how people who really know how to handle social media no no problem at all i think it's very um, i think it's very hopeful in a way that why can't we have positive messaging why can't we have you know rather than people sitting on the sidelines why can't we have people actually saying we're going to work on this we're going to make this happen and not be scared not be afraid of the whole political milieu that has silenced so many you know across the board but let's so, I mean, now talk let's talk specifically about your meeting with the man and the conversation okay. you had right so yeah so my meeting was ab- absolutely by chance it was not by design now i had already decided to go on particular dates i went on the 8th and the 9th 7th 8th and the 9th actually but 7th was like a rest stop uh and uh, I, what what why 7th 8th and 9th is like they were entering maharashtra on the same dates and i wanted to be there at the border of maharashtra sort of as a welcoming i mean i i wasn't going to stand there with a thali of aarti in my hand obviously i would be somewhere lost in the crowd way back behind with nobody knowing me but uh, the idea was to you know greet them when they came in and uh, uh, when i when i reached there very surprisingly uh, a few people knew me i didn't know that they, i mean there was there was somebody covering the entire yatra from kanyakumari and uh, he looked at me and said adi darshan and said yes I said okay so we'll have biryani today and i was like okay what's with, what's with biryani i've never asked for that <laughs> so <laughs> so uh yeah so uh, my 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 meeting with rahul gandhi just sort of happened because there were a lot of people who said boss you have to meet him go and meet him and so many uh, other you know regular common people had met him that they felt i had a chance when i saw the crowd it was like 1 2 lakh people there were there were politicians there were mpcc chiefs there were general secretaries there were non political but very affluent crowd i met a few social activists there whom i am in awe of so i was like oh dude ye bhi hai you know no, admiral ramdas was also i don't know at which leg he joined admiral ramdas he was he was not in maharashtra i think he was in telangana admiral ramdas and lalita people ramdas of that caliber were there people of that sort of lineage were there Yes. yeah so so you know as i said you know when i went to the entry of maharashtra the entry of the yatra in maharashtra there were so many people whom i have been look, looking up to and i think they are fabulous people and they were there and when i asked them that are you going to meet rahul gandhi and they were like no no abhi tak kuch bana nahi hai like inka nahi bana to mera kya chance banega so it was it was like <laughs> give up <laughs> so i had i had decided that i will just walk and uh, when my three days finish i'll get back so then suddenly then one of my friends uh, on social media she pulled a few strings and uh, then she managed to get me in touch with the people who coordinate the meetings right and then they screened my facebook and they saw what i do and they said okay nice nice candidate chalo isko le lo so so that's that's how that's how the meeting happened you know, right. just just to clarify not everybody who meets rahul gandhi has to get strings pulled It's like there are three type of people. One, one who come from party recommendations. One who you know go like me, and then Rahul Gandhi is suddenly uh, he pulls people out of the crowd, and that is not planned. That is that is not. Oh, I mean, it is not a photo op. He just does that. He's his security cordon. I mean, with a lot of apprehension, I'm saying this is not that robust as you would expect. you know for for the cion of gandhi to be so uh, he just he just he just walks and he points out to somebody and says isko isko bulao you know some some nice face in the crowd some little girl some old woman some normal farmer and he just pulls them in and then he walks with them so either you have to be extremely lucky to talk to him because this is luck right or then you have to be well known or then you have to be like 
So you don't know how you got to meet Rahul Gandhi. That's, that's how you get to meet. You know, a lot of uh, people are also just looking at the courage of this man, given the family history of, you know, um, such brutal sort of, you know, attacks on his family. It's just, you cannot, it doesn't matter which party, whatever, just as a human being, you cannot help feeling like this is not an ordinary kind of a person. This is not an ordinary courage. What was yeah. your, when you spoke to him, what was your impression of him? Well, you know, just when I, when I decided to go for the Yatra, I called up my mom. And I told her that I'm going for the Bharat Jodo Yatra. And she said, are you going to walk? Are you going to get a chance to walk with Rahul Gandhi? And I'm, so I said, I'm not sure. She, she said, keep a distance, okay? I was like, why? She said, do you know, not know the history? I was like, come on, this is not the right. I, I've already packed my bags. I'm getting in the car and now you're scaring me. So, <laughs> so the, and when I was walking with him, a bunch of guys actually broke into the security guard. They were, they were right behind Rahul. So on the right side of Rahul, they were kind of behind. They broke through the rope. They came in, the guards stopped them and they were they were they they couldn't touch Rahul Gandhi. They were still like six feet away, but still just six feet away. Close enough. Close enough. And they, had, they had a bag of India in their hand, which they wanted to put on Rahul Gandhi's shoulders. The guards didn't allow it, but it's that easy. It's that scary. And for those two seconds, when I when there was a huge sound, you know, a lot of noise, you know, so, oh, and they rushed it. I was like, Dude, see you all. <laughs> so, so I, but he has no fear. His but absolute of, of his generation, which I think we all are, um, it's very real. The memories of that time are very real it's of good. getting the news, of opening that newspaper in the morning, of what the whole city came to a standstill. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. There's been an assassination. Like, you know, those things. Obviously, but then to see his face and to see him quite relaxed, I mean, I don't want to make this into a sort of idolatry sort of an interview, but just as a human being, when you when you see someone with that amount of conviction and fearlessness, that it inspires something. It he's, he is not scared at all. Let me tell you, he's not scared. There is not a moment of, I mean, there's not a, even a, an iota of uh, fear inside him. When he walks, when he talks, and you know, because when I, as I told you about those people rushing into the cordon while we were walking, he did not bat an eyelid. He was not like, "Come on, Ed, your father has been blown up." In a similar situation, your mom, your grand grandmother was like shot by her own security guards. The entire Gandhi family has been known to have a, a certain sort sort of a death in every generation, and yours is the next generation. And not even scared, I would have hit on the table. I mean, come on. Or at least, you know, hid under, behind somebody. But he did not move. He just kept walking. It was like, nothing happened. So he, he's not scared. He's not scared at all. Let's get to the conversation. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, what, what, was the, what was the question? I kind of got distracted by the uh, security thing. No, that's all right. I'm sure it's very real for you in front of yeah. your eyes. But um, I just wanted to talk to you about the actual conversation that you had with him. Ah, yeah. So basically it started off with him trying to get to know me. That is what I sort of sectionalize it in. So he asked me, what do you do? Where, where, which school of thought do you come from? So he was asking me random questions like, do you see that police guy out there? So do you think he has the right to hit that man? So the police guy was actually pushing a guy who was trying to come inside the rope. So he said, do you think he has the right to hit that guy? And I said, no. So then what would you say that if the guy hit him? And so we were ha having, you know, such conversations. I think he was, he was sort of, you know, uh, playing ball, you know, generally to figure out what is his... He asked me if you're from Congress, as I said before, and I said, no, I yeah. don't have a party affiliation. He asked me my religious thoughts. I don't know why he asked it, but probably he had, he had got that Shivawala Bhasam on his uh, yeah. forehead. He had, he had gone to a school and I think they put that thing on his head. So he was also probably thinking on those lines. So yeah. he asked me about what, what religion do you follow? So, and then he came to the point of, uh, then he asked me like, okay, so why are you here for? And then, you know, uh, what, what do you, he, he said, why are you here from? And what would you like us to do for you? So I started with, I, it's not what you, we want you to do for, for us. It's like, what should we do? Because you have already started doing something. Now, how do we contribute? And that's that's how the conversation started. 
And uh, then, then he spoke about the fascists. He specifically named the BGP and RSS. He was not vague at all. He was very specific. He spoke about the RSS. He spoke about the fear mongering. He spoke about how the the society has been uh, subdued with fear. Well, then, then we had a word about you know how how there is a persistent bullying going on under the name of trolling, but it's it's kind of, it's basically bullying. You bully a person into silence. So uh, that's what's going on. How do you overcome it? He spoke about overcoming the fears with a view. But that was that was a very interesting thing he said. He said there is no fear in the society. When when you know it started, like I, I told him, what do you have to say about the fear which has spread in the society right now? He said, There is no fear in the society. See, I'm walking, you're walking. Do we feel any fear? And I said, No. So he said, There is no fear in the society. The fear is inside you. The fear is inside every person, every individual. You overcome the fear, you will be able to walk. You will be able to say whatever you want to, you will be able to do whatever you want to. So the fear is inside you. And it's nice. It's, the fear is not an external enemy who's standing outside and you go out and the fear is going to kill you. It's, it doesn't happen like this. The fear is will always be something which is inside you. But very interesting. It's very uh, uh, sorted, that guy. It just seems almost like, you know, when you say Yatra, mm. Yatra has this connotation of like a pilgrimage of something that is more than a walk. It's not just yeah. a walk. It's not a solidarity walk. It's a yatra. yatra also extracts a price, right? This a yatra has something that it takes from you yes, yes, yes. to get you somewhere, right? And it has a philosophical underpinning. And I mean, you're a storyteller <laughs> and you have written stories. There's a very human, almost mythological aspect to this a man traveling across a country. Um, to bind a country that is broken? Well, no, actually, you know, surprisingly, this is, this is something that we spoke about, which, which I mean, me and uh, with Rahul, we had, we had this talk. And I, I said the exact same thing, not in the same words, but what I said was, you know, uh, a Gandhi is walking again in India. And he said, mm -hmm. no, it's, it's nothing like that. Gandhi walked for a different reason. I'm not Mahatma Gandhi. I'm walking for myself. He's distancing from that association for sure. He's always yeah, pushing yeah. back. So he said, he said, I'm walking for myself. Hmm. So you say that you're walking to stitch the fabric of social, uh, social, uh, you know, the society as such. That's not the point. I'm trying to understand India. I'm trying to, because I have never been into all these places. So I, I want to understand India. And, well, you know, in the process, if the fabric is being stitched, good enough. In the process, if I, if we that's get more. the best way, no? Maybe that's the best yeah. way. It has to start with your own personal journey, yes. personal yeah. growth, and whatever else happens from it is a happy byproduct. Yes, yes. And I, and I asked him then, why walk? Why did you have to walk? I mean, you could have done this quicker and across India by taking flights, going by trains, to getting your Congress workers to drop you by car. And he said, no, that's, that's not the point. He said, this is a yatra. A yatra is, is a tapas. This is my tapasya, he said. And I have to lose something. It has to hurt me. It has to pain me. When I walk, at the end of the day, my legs ache. I have, I have, initially, I had blisters on my feet. So when it hurts me, my tapasya gets realized. So he, he has a spiritual angle to the yatra too. It is not just as cut, cut and dry as it is you know, being made out on the social media. It's not, it's not so simple. He has I a philosophy. I got a sense of that, that really this, this seems, and actually, you know, there's only so much you can do for political aims. You know, yeah. to push yourself like this 21 kilometers a day for so many days. I mean, there has to be more at the end of it than, you know, than power, than power. I think, I think this is about him, to be very honest. He's, he's personally evolving. He's personally, you know, he's just trying to, trying to uh, develop himself as a different person. The, the, the confidence that he has gained now, you know, the, the way he talks, you will, you will notice the difference between the way he talks now and the way he used to talk about four or five months ago. No, absolutely, so he has, yes. So you have gained a lot of stuff from this, you know, a lot of confidence, uh, willpower. He, he's testing himself, like 30, 20, 30 kilometers every day, walking, and okay, they, they take enough rests and their camps are pretty decent. Fair mm -hmm. enough. But still, it's walking. You cannot fake 30 kilometers of walking when the entire Absolutely. media is watching. 
So he let's is doing talk, that. Let's talk a little bit about the, um, well, not the opposition, but you know what the detractors and try to look at this a little bit more objectively. Um, you know, obviously everybody loves a good story. Everybody loves an emotive story. Um, is there is there any truth in thinking that this is going to be a great story? It's going to be an emotional journey, and then it's going to be business as usual. Well, I don't know what you mean by business as usual because if we are talking about governance, that comes later. But I'm pretty sure there's going to change a lot of scenario, a lot of lot of the electoral scenario. That's what I'm asking. Do you really yeah. think it will? It, yeah, it will. It will. I, I do feel that it will change a lot of things electorally because this is not the only thing that is happening right now. From uh, some hints that were dropped during the conversation, I will not say that. I mean, okay, maybe they were hints, maybe they were not. Maybe I, you know, tried to assume something out there, but he said there will be a lot of changes. And I asked him, there, I said, I said there already are being a lot of changes. Look at the amount of people joining you. So yes, there, there will be changes. I agree with India. He said no with Congress. Hmm. So they may. Be I don't know what he meant by that. I did not. Yeah, I did not want to get into it because I knew that if he answered me, I would write about it. So yeah, there, there, I think I think there will be a lot of changes within Congress also after after this yatra ends. You know, there was this uh, news laundry article by. Uh, Tanishka Sodhi, um, yes. on, you know, on the 14th of November. And there's a very powerful story it began with, you know, they were talking about this, this man called Dilip Singh, who was in his early mm -hmm. 30s yeah. when he was imprisoned for 19 months during the emergency. And he is walking. Yeah. And he said um, he's walking to unite the country against hatred. And then he says something very interesting. He says, if the forest catches on fire, it's all right if nothing remains in the end. What matters is whether or not you did anything to save it. Absolutely. Absolutely. That is, that is, that is a very similar to my thought process too, because it's, it's like, what were you doing when this was happening? It's not a derby, you know, you, you don't bet on the winning horse. It's actually a, a fight for the nation. So you have to fight it. You, you can't just run away from it or, or you can't just switch parties because your party is losing. You know, the, the side that you support is losing. It doesn't make sense. So you have to be there is what I feel. And uh, uh, at the end of the day, you know, I think uh, somewhere everybody has a conscience who is going to ask you a, a question later on. Were you sleeping when this was happening? What were you doing? If you can answer that question, then you're good. And that, I think, applies to everything around you, not, not just the Bharat Jodhraat, everything, absolutely. On that really um, sort of thought-provoking note, and while, you know, we may, we may banter about it, and there are many people on the sidelines, uh, there are people making all sorts of comments as well, but the truth and the, the purity of this intention I think is is seen by the common people. It's not about people sitting in their offices or writing media reports. It's in the people who have come out in huge numbers, not paid uh, to just do this work. And something in them has caught on to this inspiring moment. And that is what I think uh, we hope that it will be a turning point in some ways. Mm -hmm. There's a before yatra and there's an after yatra now in the public consciousness. Uh, you know, just just to uh, talk about the detractors who are sitting and you know giving opinions on what the yatra is about. I would say go to the yatra with your thoughts. Don't change your thoughts. Go to the yatra with your thoughts. Come out of the yatra and then talk about it. This is like you know some some. Uh, elitist sitting in Mumbai while Mahatma Gandhi was walking and saying, Buddha, chal rahe, chal ne do. you know, that's how this is. Unless you go and take a part in what is happening. I'm saying be cynical, be cynical, be skeptical, be, be negative, be everything that you want to, but go there. See what is happening. Talk to the people around, get your first hand information and then, then, you know, go, go and continue your remarks and come back and give the same remarks if you, if you can. Sure. I mean, that's, that's the whole point of the way we look at things, which is that 
you are allowed to change your mind. You're allowed to mm-hmm. examine something based on facts. Yes. And, you know, it's your allegiance is to your ideals. Your allegiance is not to any man, any political party, any sort of freebies that come your way. Absolutely. Absolutely. I don't understand why people have a problem with somebody changing his views or opinions. That's like the most natural thing which should happen. That's people should be entitled evolution, to change Evolution, isn't it? Evolution. Yeah. Is good. Absolutely. But uh, I mean, there's so much to talk about in terms of this whole, uh, the psychological aspect of this as well. But it has given uh, such a great insight into the walk, thanks to your own personal experience. And thank you so much for sharing it with us. Um, you know, in Australia, not all the news that is readily available in India also sometimes finds its way here. So we always feel happy when someone joins us from India, from the front lines almost, to give us a flavor of the ground. And thank you once again. Well, thank you. Thank you for inviting me. It was nice talking to you. Thank you.